Hey, everybody. How are you? Uh, welcome to our uh, Monday show. We do this without big openings or anything like that because we do it directly from Zoom onto our uh, onto our uh, Facebook page, which I'm going to look at right now just to make sure that everything's working right. Here we go. Ba -ba -ba -bum. Uh, yeah, there we go. There we are. All righty. Okay. We're ready to go. Let me uh, start admitting all these people here who want to join me uh, in our little foray into uh, camaraderie. Hello there, Shecky. How are you today? Tired, but fine. Tired, but fine. I'm tired too. Why are you tired? I have absolutely no idea. Yeah. But I wake up at like 4 a.m. every morning now. Well, Welcome to the club. Yeah, and I I uh, kept waking up all last night over and over again. Stevie Bender, how are you? How are you same? Fine? Really tired. Nightmares all night. Up at four in the morning. It's weird. Really? Yeah, weird. Really, must be catching, or maybe it's maybe it's post uh, um, whatever we had with our. You know, there was a full moon last night. <laughs> was there a full moon last night? Yeah. Wasn't well, that what got the boat out of the Suez today or something? <laughs> Did they get the boat out of the Suez finally? Yeah. Yeah. It's sailing down the Suez at the moment. Yeah. Well, I, what are they going to do to prevent that from happening again? Len Lucasco <laughs> is in the front seat of his airplane. Is that? Yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I wish it was my airplane. I wish it was your airplane. Andrew Deutsch. Hello, Andrew. How are Hello. you? I'm well. How are you? Uh, yes. When you move your hands out, we can see how you're doing your uh, your thing there. So you move your hands all the way out to the side, and people will see that your arm will disappear. You said it was a full moon? <laughs> they see? Oh, he lost his arm. Uh, Mike Chisholm is up in uh, Canada, and Charlie Wallace is down there and deep in the heart of... Uh, uh, Texas, uh, yeah. having avoided COVID because he's gotten had his shot. Oh, look at Marjorie. She's wearing one of my hats. Because my <laughs> hair's a mess. She's going to go on a Michael Jackson video. My hair's a mess, too. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> Who gave you the haircut? Actually, I just got a haircut from Marjorie today. So no tip. Still, still sloughing off. What? No tip. No tip. No, no tip. tip. <laughs> no. Um, Wait till you see his next haircut. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so anyway, so we got we got the uh, the uh, the Suez Canal was plugged up with a boat. <laughs> three uh, weeks, <laughs> three oh, days or four I don't days. Know if you felt the same way as you looked at it, but you kept saying, "I kept saying to myself, why don't they get a tugboat and just push it all over to the side?" Right. Well, they that's how they got that. it out. Like in tugboats, they pulled it out today, yesterday, or whatever. Yeah. That's what they happened. Were, it was so embedded in the bank. They were using tugboats every day. I wonder how much that shipping company is going to be sued for. <laughs> well, they're saying it's costing $10 billion in lost revenue to other shippers per day. Per day. Per hour. Um, and there were, there were live animals on some of the ships that were back in the in the waiting line, and uh, so they were worried about that too. Wow. Well, well, according to QAnon, on board that ship were Hillary Clinton's pedophile uh, food, <laughs> a bunch of children that were on their way to be slaughtered. <laughs> they, they posted it. I and they're, eating, they're eating for Passover. Yeah, yeah un unleavened, unleavened uh, children. <laughs> Oh boy! None of the kids are allowed to have yeast. Yeah. Hey, listen, <laughs> everybody, talk to each other. I have to go. Oh no, I have it here. I have it here. I don't have to go. <laughs> Cheers. Well, this is seltzer with caffeine. Okay. Okay. It's exciting, but anyway. So, um, well, are you boycotting Coca Cola now? I, you know what it is? I found, I, I, get, I, I ordered from Costco their seltzer, their flavored seltzers. And uh, I started drinking that and I really like it. So I saw this down the store, which is just simply seltzer with caffeine. So I bought some of these too. I haven't been drinking Diet Coke for a while now. Good. That's good. I mean, I've got three cases of it in the house, but I, okay. you know, 
and I haven't had any Snapple. I haven't because had Snapple I, in two years. Because the only thing I really need these things for is to quench my thirst. And if it's a seltzer, come it's on. Healthier. Good and to go, healthier. right? So, Edward yeah. Berger, how's your cartoon voice today? Very good, very good. <laughs> you know, you can make a fortune off that voice. Oh, I'll have that. to look into that. You should look into that. Yeah. You just show up for one audition, you're going to nail it. Yeah. <laughs> I have a friend of mine who does uh, voice, cartoon voices, and uh, he did very well at it. Uh, yeah. He got one job. Yeah, I know who you mean. <laughs> Tom Kenny. Yep. <laughs> voice of SpongeBob SquarePants. Yeah, right. what a gig. Huh? That is, how long has that been going now that he's been getting? I, I was so happy when he got it. I said, oh, at least he finally got a good gig as the star of his show. And the thing went on forever, plus the movies, the toy dolls, all yeah. of it. It's amazing yeah. what you can write when you're stoned out of your mind. <laughs> <laughs> he, no, he probably, sits at home, he probably sits at home getting these checks in the mail every day to the tune of more of a salary than, you know, Tom Cruise. Yeah. I mean, it's amazing what he, what, he, what he got. Well, it's like that woman who does the Toyota commercials, that actress. She makes millions yeah. doing wow. Toyota commercials. As I forget the name of the character. Oh, yeah. A the AT&T girl, too. Well, she it, makes a fortune. No, who? The AT&T girl. I don't the, know the one there. you're talking about. Yeah, uh, Lily. 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 Lily? Lily. Lily? She she I actually saw a behind the scenes thing where she's actually directing the commercials and starring in them. So she's making a fortune. I, I don't know what you're talking about because I haven't seen these commercials. And I, I you know I guess I'm not watching. Well, you watch the wrong television shows. Yeah. Well, let's watch the old people's shows. We watch the old people's shows. Yeah, we get all the uh, all we get. You get Aaron Brockovich for myothelioma or whatever it's called. <laughs> <laughs> What, what's, I was reading an article about the, you know, the Verizon guy that left Verizon and went to work for, for the other one once his contract was yeah. up. And yeah. now there's there's another one that it was someone else from an insurance company that's yeah. not doing the uh, same. Justin Long. Justin Long is doing Yeah, yeah, he's for Apple. Got, he's moving over to, uh, yeah, yeah. I think it's Google or something like that. As a, brand, as a branding guy, I think it's, a, it's, it's interesting for a second. And then I think it's negative to the brand. I don't think it's really? a good idea. Huh. What's that? It, it, well, it, it, if I endorse Verizon for years and years and then my contract's up and I go say, well, now I'm with Sprint because they're better. <laughs> I did that. And now Justin Long, who was with, was it Apple for years? Yeah, and now he's he was with, the Apple guy. And now he's gone to work for some a competitor, I think Intel or something. I forget which. Well, I don't think he, I think he may have had a non-compete clause for a while. Yeah. You know, I mean, I'm sure these companies, when they say, Hey, you're going to be doing a thousand of these Apple commercials. So all we want you to do is to sign a non-compete. Yeah, it's it's good for him. The point oh, is yeah. that it's not. I don't think it's good for the brand that he's switched over to. Yeah, mm. it's like you know, do you want you want Benedict Arnold for your your, 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 your brand <laughs> yeah, model? We're on commercials. Mark <laughs> and I have taken note of something lately. Like the best series of commercials I think practically in the history of television have been the Geico ads. Used to be. Those are very Let me finish what well, I was saying. Yeah, some of, yeah. Let me finish with what I was saying. Uh, I think they've run the most savvy advertising yeah. you know, of anybody. In fact, they had three different kinds of ads for three four, different four. kinds of audiences. One with the Geico gecko, gecko, and then one with something else. And they were they were different ones for certain groups. Group. And they all worked. And they all worked. Lately, all of a sudden, I look at her and I go, these Geico commercials are sucking. Mm. I mean, it's almost like somebody trying to do Geico commercials. Yeah. Mm. You know, well, like that one with the woman saying, hey, you know, uh, do you want to serve your food with uh, this rap group or whatever the thing is? And I'm going, well, what's that about? How's that selling it? It was funny before, but I don't know. Yeah. Research shows like the progressive with that flow person yeah. actually taken Hater. away from their business in this new <laughs> liberty with the emu. I can't stand so, them. Yeah, the emu never bought a progressive insurance because of that woman. Yep. The and and I, progressive is here in town. Many people I, I know work there and they all hate the commercial and they don't understand 
why they continue paying that woman a fortune when yes. it actually turns people off. The best progressive ads are the ones about, uh, I try to keep these people from being like their parents. Yeah. Oh, I love that. Those oh, yeah. Great ads. They're inspired. They're funny. Uh, we get a good laugh out of them. But, but they, they have on the other hand, they're the same people who do flow. And yeah. You wonder why are they doing flow? What what is the the what does she have on them? I think I think Flo is going to switch brands and start selling feminine hygiene <laughs> yeah. products because the name fits. So. You know, that actress that plays Flo lives in Austin. Really? Yeah. <laughs> if the woman who plays how's, Flo. How's her Flo? plays Flo. Yeah. Yeah. Well, she only has to leave town once every year to do the spots, and well, then she's making a fortune every time they run they run a commercial oh, yeah. hundreds of oh, times yeah. a day. Yeah, I don't know if they still pay the same as they used to, but it used to be that if you did a commercial, the first time they played, you got so much. And every time it played after that for the next 13 weeks, you got the same amount. And then, and then you still got residuals for the but, rest of your life. Then you got residuals yeah. for the rest of your life. No, you don't. Not with ads. Ads will stop being Well, used. if they pick up after 13 weeks, another cycle. You get yeah. it again. You do another cycle. That's what you're saying. Residual ends when the commercial ends. Yeah. You know, or the I have a friend who. Uh, huh? I have a friend who acts in commercials, and uh, they've they've started this thing now too, where they give them a payout, a lump sum payout, so they don't have to do some of the long term stuff moving forward. So yeah. he gets that sometimes. But you don't have to take the lump sum payout. No, I think I think there's a there's a choice there. Yeah. yeah. And then they'll get someone else if you don't want to take the payout. That's right. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. 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 So well, look what they did with Gilbert Gottfried. I mean, he they dumped him fast. You know, yeah. poor guy. Yeah. Yeah, but they couldn't really replace him. It, it, no. You notice they aren't doing those those ads anymore. Affleck. They tried. They tried, Alex. They're trying they tried. and they're terrible. Yeah. They're horrible. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna argue a little bit on their side to this extent that really all Gilbert was saying was one word. <laughs> Right. Yeah. And he was right. saying it. Well, wait a minute. I'll show you who could replace him. Ed Edward. <laughs> I was saying, yeah. Okay. Here we go. Affleck. <laughs> <laughs> Take my money. Am I right? That's Do right. Do it again. Yeah. Do it again. This is an oh. audition. Okay. okay. Affleck. Yeah. Look at that. He got a crowd oh, cheering. Look at all the money he's making. You <laughs> 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 know. Gilbert is a friend of mine, and uh, I said to him once, I said, now you only had to go in once and say Affleck, right? He said, oh, no, no. These producers are like, they love their power. So I have to come in every time they're doing a new commercial to say Affleck. Wow. And because I'm thinking, oh. all they had to do was have him say Affleck once, and they just keep paying him and paying him and paying him. Well, no, the producer wants to put his spin on the phrase, Affleck. <laughs> <laughs> Same if I took Gilbert and one Affleck commercial and another Affleck. He said, no, they wanted me in every time for, for the new Affleck commercial. So that I sounds like to... red tape to me. That totally sounds like red tape. Like every time they, there's there's probably union laws or rules or something to do with that for recycling somebody's performance in a commercial. I don't. I I don't think so. I think if you reuse a person's voice, you have to pay. It's a new ad, so it's huh? a new use. It's a new use. Yeah, Shecky knows a lot about this because you did yeah. you had to deal with this on the Letterman show on many in, in many. Yeah, if like they took an appearance of mine and used it in a different bit, you were being paid as if you had shown up that day. Okay. And what, that what happened when Letterman went into reruns on, I think it was the NBC on MSNBC? The A&E series? A &E. Yeah. Well, uh, I produced the series. Yeah, you produced it. Well, you, they I was the executive producer of that. Well, because they came to you to pick out the, the episodes, right? Yeah. No, we had to pay residuals. Okay. And so you were on that show quite often. You played Elvis and... Uh, yeah, you would get a check. And so to this day, do you still get checks? If it gets repeated, which the late night shows don't, if a late show episode repeats somewhere, you would get a residual. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So, and so do you still see residuals coming in? I haven't seen one in years. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I still get residuals. You still get it. I still get residual. Well, 
limited. But I did. Yeah, very I, limited. I did the voice on uh, uh, HBO's One Night Stand, the first series of twelve. Mm. Uh, and for a while, I was getting a lot of money on all of those. But to this day on HBO, they still run the Bill Maher one, okay? And every year, I get a check for like about $72 for, for <laughs> a year's run of uh, Bill Maher. Were, weren't you the voice on like an adult entertainment thing on HBO? Like one of their late night shows or something? Oh, uh, no. oh on HBO. Like, like Midnight Blue? Yeah. No, that was that wasn't what we we were. You know, that never made it to HBO. HBO <laughs> tried to kill us. Is what they that did. was Channel J. Yeah. Channel yeah. J. No, but, I thought I thought you were on an HBO series. No, Did, but I was on the I was on the uh, the series of, <laughs> of comedy uh, gotcha. tonight, uh, which was on comedy tonight was on PBS. This I, isn't sex; it's HBO. Those occasionally. Remember and, that? Uh, and and then I did the uh, HBO one night stands, but and there were a lot of good people during that first year that I did the announcing on, but uh, the only one that's still running is the Bill Maher because he's still on HBO and they want to plug him. Okay. Yeah, so if you go to that HBO, Bill Maher HBO, it's me announcing it's one night, you know, HBO's one night stand with Bill Maher, ladies and gentlemen, Bill Maher. And I did those originally when we did the shows originally, but then they said, ah, we didn't get the right sound on that. So they flew me down to Hollywood one day to <laughs> sit at the studio and redo all those openings, which was very nice of them. So, hmm. And I got, I got a lot of residuals for those. Comedy Tonight, which I only got paid about a $150 an episode for. Wow. when we originally did them and we did like four a year only four of them a year maybe it was six but i think it was four after a while these checks started rolling in every single year and after it was over with i made maybe ten thousand dollars off comedy tonight when they wow. kept running it up for 20 years straight Wow. So, you know, it, it can amount to a lot of cash, even though it doesn't seem like a lot when you get the paycheck the first time. You know? <clears throat> so, um, yeah. Uh, Good stuff. Yeah. So anyway, so um, uh, let's see, we talked about the uh, the wedging of the uh, boat. And the, <laughs> you know what they're doing on TV today? And it really... I, this is, I don't know if this is being political. And look, uh, everybody I think feels for George Floyd and his family and what, what went on in Minneapolis. And now don't take it the wrong way. The family got $13 million from- 27. Yeah. 27. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, and I'm not I, saying I, they have to get some- I understand what you're saying. And this isn't the family being compensated. This is now- arguing whether this guy should be found guilty of murdering George Floyd. Every network is carrying every, the trial. Every, are they no, real? Not, yeah. Uh, uh, no. MSNBC, uh, no, not the, not the over-the-air networks. But I'm right, the CNN. They're not carrying it. Who isn't? CNN, Who MSNBC, Fox. Fox is carrying it. I checked yeah. Fox today. I thought they weren't. Yeah, but that's, that's a cable network. No, but when CBS saying, was carrying this morning. Were they, they carrying it? All their more morning shows. Oh, really? Oh, really? At least here well, in Austin, they did. different than canceling your soap opera, The Price yeah, is but Right. Every, every one of these cable, <laughs> they, cable outlets. I didn't get to watch Price is Right today. Be honest about it. <laughs> these, cable, these cable outlets are the number one news outlets now. Well, they're looking, they need programming. Well, yeah, yeah but I mean, I don't know that we need to watch this trial you know i mean or it, tv it, you maybe the last day when the verdict comes in or the maybe the beginning of it when they're making their opening remarks but i mean are they going to carry this every single day well remember when the oj trial happened i was just thinking of that television oh for months oh. and they yeah. would have specials showing you how abc built a studio to cover it, and then they found out no one was watching. <laughs> it'll be it'll be interesting to watch and see if maybe they'll run an ad for the new Ford Bronco during this trial. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, 
Well, I mean, um, uh, let's see. Uh, Fox was breaking for commercials, but I didn't notice MSNBC breaking for commercials. I didn't, you know, I, I watched for a long time. sell them. Uh, you were watching, Steve? Yeah. I watched a stretch of it. It was so depressing, but um, yeah, yeah. there didn't seem to be any commercials in the stretch I watched. Yeah. yeah. yeah I you watched it on what? MSNBC. MSNBC. Did you yeah. see MSNBC is beating Fox in the ratings now? Yeah, first time, yeah. Yeah, because the OAN and those other lunatic networks worse than Fox have drawn away the Fox viewers. Yeah, they're yeah. siphoning off crazies to other crazier networks. Yeah. <laughs> well, now that I feel MSNBC deserves it. In fact, Marjorie can't even watch them anymore. Oh, because so I've been sick. Because you've been sick? You just said, I'm sick of watching them. I'm sick and tired. <laughs> <laughs> there, have, have you started watching the documentary on hbo about the how what QAnon is and where it came from oh, yeah. I, i'll tell you yeah. vice, i got through vice, half of the first vice ran a three episode arc <clears throat> on QAnon, and it basically has all those same people it's like i was watching the same documentary all over again yep. i find it a little confusing well, here, here's the thing, why the, the Q people believe this stuff is true, because Stephen Miller would watch the downloads, the, the, the drops, yeah. and then he would give a clue to Trump for the next day. Q says you're going to say these words, say them. Yeah. And then he would say them. So people, oh, wow. it, it worked because they said he was going to say tip top. And then the next day, <laughs> Trump said it. So Q is in the White House. But what it was, was his guy is stealing off of that and, and was cueing him to say, if you want to keep the mystique up of this cue that's going to get you reelected, say these words tomorrow. Well, did they find out in this documentary who Q was? I think it was some guy in Asia or something. Well, the people who own 4chan, 8chan, yeah. are some Americans that live in the Philippines. And by the way, is, it was a website yeah. that you could go to and anybody could publish anything they wanted to on 8chan. Yeah. Which I think it would start out as 4chan, didn't it? And then it well, there was 4chan 8chan. and Reddit. And this strange guy that, that had some sort of a brittle bone disease didn't think that it was open enough. So he took what he thought was the best of both and created 8chan. And yeah. then this expatriate in the Philippines bought it from him and moved him from the States to the Philippines and put him in an apartment to run the business. And, and it's just, I mean, these, these expatriate lunatics it's a total created freak. the environment where Q could take place. The total freak show. Yeah, but, <laughs> yes. but the White House was keeping track of the drops so that they could get Trump to make it look like they had something to do with him to get the mystique that this Q thing was real. I think this will be interesting evidence if he's ever tried for, um, for the attack on the Capitol because he actively was trying to perpetuate the myth of Q. Stephen so, Miller. Yeah. yeah. That's that's what it looks like. It's, I don't know that it's back. It's the same way he used the Proud Boys, you know, the right. stand, stand back, you know, just, you know, using these code words to let his fans know he's with them. Yeah. Yeah. yeah to let her know he appreciates the, the, the mystique of this, this, this cabal of nonsense. Well, has anybody watched, I've had a great documentary to watch. <clears throat> and my friend Patrick, who is uh, disabled, uh, suggests that I watch it. And he said, I don't normally like this sort of stuff. Crip Camp, right? Crip Camp. I haven't seen it. Have you seen Crip Camp, Shecky? No. Watch no. Crip Camp. I think you will, in, it's very, as documentaries go, very enjoyable and very, it, it kind of made me feel good. You know, now you're not crippled. And well, no, it didn't make me feel good that I wasn't crippled, <laughs> although that does is a, is a <laughs> factor in the whole thing. But just that these people, they all went to this camp together for the disabled. And what came out of it was the whole movement against uh, the disabled and for getting laws passed for the disabled. And how they, they went and demonstrated by blocking traffic and wheelchairs in New York mm -hmm. City and things like that. And they really, I mean, it's, it's a very, uh, how can I say, a self-affirming tale about, you know, if these people could do it, anybody could do it if they really wanted to, you know? And it's a it's a great little documentary if you get a chance to watch it. You watching anything good, Shecky? Seventy-seven Sunset Strip. <laughs> <laughs> you had to go back that far to find something good, huh? 
hey, I'm in season four. I'm getting to the <laughs> finish line. <laughs> well, what is it about 77 Sunset Strip? It's making you, on top of everything else, binge watch it. Because it has all those young actresses of the 60s who ended up on Gilligan's Island, <laughs> that girl, things where you just go, oh, look, it's Yvonne Craig. Oh, look, it's, you know. Yeah. yeah. Okay. When they were starlets. And also the young 22-year-old men who, you know, some had careers and some became parking attendants. <laughs> <laughs> and then, of course, the one thing I've realized and I think you probably know it, no matter what happens to these guys, somehow by the end of the show, they're okay. Now here they're is the, here's the, They're getting shot at, and but it's all over. Here's the trivia question. How many here remember 77 Sunset Strip? Oh, yeah. oh, okay, so we're, we're in that, that group, group of people who would remember it. Here's the trivia question for Shecky, and I bet he knows the answer. What building did they use as 77 Sunset Strip? You mean next to Dino's Lodge? No, that was Dino's. That they were using. No, it was actually the back lot. The back Warner's. lot of Dino's. No, the back lot of Warner's. Of Warner's. No, but but they used Dino's as the shot of 77. Right. But, but that was a shot, but in the first episode or second or whatever. But 77 Sunset Strip, the quote building they worked in, was on the back lot at Warner Brothers. Oh, okay. All right. Because Dino's was at like 8750 Sunset Boulevard. There well, is no 77, 77 Sunset, Sunset Strip. They just used it out at the beginning of the show. Didn't they have a, a the, the building with the uh, with the drive in where you drove in on the side? Oh no, they had, that was but that was used and then because of stock footage. Yeah, yeah, that was Dino's. That was Dino's Lodge. Yeah. Yes. Now, in case Dino's was owned by Dean Martin. Dean. Yeah. When he and that's where they would hang out and have drinks. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going oh. over to Dino's for dinner. I'm going to Dino's for and, lunch. And, where, Dino. and, and tell them where you're watching 77 Sunset Strip. I downloaded it. Oh, okay. Oh, I thought maybe you bought the DVDs. No, they're not, they're not on DVD. I haven't seen them. I'd have bought those. Really? <laughs> no, they've never been released. I don't know. I feel so some of them are, for, are from me TV. Some of them are from like Channel Twenty Year Old Stomping Ground in San Francisco. You know that kind of thing. I'll tell you what. What I watched because I I was a big fan of the guy way back when. But I lo I love YouTube as Marjorie knows. I just surf YouTube. There's always something there. Mm -hmm. You know the ten people who hate Doctor Who. That's one of them. You know it's like that. Anything. Also, <laughs> I found the other day. Uh, the Chung King uh, Comedy Hour, uh, a special done on ABC by Stan Freeberg. Oh yeah, yeah. And it, it really, you know, and quite quite funny. Very very much Freeberg and the kind of stuff he was doing. In the well, you know, Freeberg walked out on our show one day. He was in my office and he walked out. Why did he walk out? Because. NBC would not allow us to use the commercials that we booked them to show. Can Being not... Chungking, the Great American Soup Company, whatever those were. Yeah. So would... he was in my office and we're trying to get it cleared. And NBC finally just said, ah, uh -uh. and he just said, I really thank you for bringing me in, but I'm leaving. If you won't play these commercials, I won't. Yeah. Because that's what he was plugging, right? He was just there because we wanted him to come on. To show a couple of commercials and talk about the show in the fifties and talk about Stan Freeberg. Yeah, yeah. I think I'm trying to remember. Very famous commercials. Yep. Yes. Uh, yes. Line. I said I have. I have to go. I got to go to a meeting. Nice to talk to you. Have a lovely uh, afternoon. Okay. Well, uh, get Hi, get behind the wheel of your plane now. And I, and and I love your shirt, Alex. I huh? just realized what you're wearing. Your video yeah. toaster shirt. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's that's cool. All right, have a good week, you guys. We'll talk next week. Bye bye. See you later. Bye bye, 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 man. by the way, in case anybody wants to call and join this group, all you have to do is go to gabnet.net. And over on the right hand side of the play the page, it says click here to zoom us. And that will just let you zoom to us. Even if you don't have Zoom installed, it will take you there. Okay. And you can join this uh, group of people. 
or uh, you can go over to my Facebook page and there's a link on the Facebook page right now. Uh, wait, wait, wait. Speaking, of, speaking of which, we should yeah. probably uh, all, all uh, I don't know if we need to start something here to say free Mandy or not, but clearly she lost her uh, her argument with the co-worker, so she's not here this week. Oh, so we should something to get anybody. Oh, right. I'll see argument, do you? Yes, the, the neighbor minutes. next to her in her office complained about it. Yeah, but have you talked to her since? No, no, oh, she hasn't. Oh, okay. Been. You know. But I have a little thing. Basically talking on the telephone. I mean, what the Because she had earphones, so she wasn't yeah. hearing us. Exactly. <coughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It's like she's job. talking to a client. Yeah. Oh, well. We miss you, Mandy. But well, let's just go down to Georgia and have her killed. <laughs> Just don't the, bring her water, you'll it, go to jail. Almost, <laughs> yeah, don't time. bring her water. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see Cuomo shiny new coin for the day? Uh, no, no. The new coin. Now he refers to the shiny coin as the little things that Cuomo does to, to have you take your eye off of what's happening in his life. <laughs> Not a lot of them, the big one, right? Oh, yeah. Well, big one. Well, that's, that's there was a big, big one. To, uh, no, no, this is not a big one, but Gloria Allred flew in. To defend one of the a new woman, shocking. Oh, really? <laughs> Apparently, according to this woman, who's now fifty five, three mm. years ago, her house got flooded, and Cuomo was doing one of those trips around whatever that town was, and she invited him into her house to see the flood damage, mm. and apparently he kissed her on both cheeks. Right. Oh my God! Oh my God! Old, old, I, I, I show I sympathy am, for I'm her. Sorry, I'm sorry. This precludes God. any kind of sexual advances anybody has ever made on any woman. Well, it's it's for she wasn't Wait, for clarification, was was she a Mennonite or something? <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought you were going to say she. he. he I thought you were going to say he wanted a wet T-shirt. Here's what I don't her. get. Here's what I don't get to begin with. All right, you know, I've said this before. Cuomo is an Italian guy. And, and you can kiss someone on both cheeks. Well, well, that's that's right. No, forget about that. We'll get to that in a second. That part You're of it. Touching feely. Well, no, it, it's that Italian guys always had a certain attitude about how you come on to women. Okay. It was just part of the culture. And now times have changed. And of course, the younger Italian men won't do that. But he's an older Italian guy. And to him, a lot of this is just being nice to a woman, kissing her on both cheeks. What? The French do there. You know? You, know, you know, come into my house, look at the damage that's been done because of the flood. So he kissed her on both cheeks to show sympathy, I would guess. I wasn't there, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. And if he'd have hugged her, I think he'd have been accused of groping. Yeah. Yeah. yeah but but I, it was in a sexual manner that he kissed her on both cheeks. But I think that's, how sexual is that? Well, that's I think cold. I kissed Marjorie on her cheek. Maybe I'm wrong on that, but pretty sure I have in Hunter. You pervert. Uh -oh. it comes to cheek. But that's cultural, isn't it? Yes. You yeah. know, it's Jewish, British, it's Italian. The British, the British yeah. do it. Yeah. I mean, you know, I mean, uh, what? If I go to see my grandmother and I say hello to her and I kiss her on both her cheeks, am I coming on to her? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Do at the time. So what? Cuomo's trying to nail the fifty-two-year-old woman who's in in a flood. Yeah. Right. <laughs> as soon as you get the place cleaned up, give me a call. You know. <laughs> but it's, it's interesting. The more of these things that keep popping up, and the more ridiculous the accusations, his popularity is rising back up again. He's still about yeah. fifty percent. Well, but it's also Gloria Allred had to figure out a way to get involved because yeah. she's an ambulance. But I'm pissed because she's supposed to be fixing some parking tickets for me. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, yeah, I just I don't get it. I mean, what used to be considered just being nice. it's considered sympathy for a woman whose house is underwater. Or it's it, it you know, it's just that or then the woman would complain he was so cold to me when he came. You know, you didn't show me any sympathy. Mm -hmm. You know, how do you I, win? I used to kiss my father hello. Okay. I did, I think, till the day my father died. Yeah. You know? Does that mean we were hot for them? Yeah. 
Does that mean we were coming on to them? Were they were they mentally abused by the action? You know, I mean, th whatever happened to the fact of people just being touchy feely, warm? Uh, you know, I mean, uh, you sometimes you would kiss a person on the cheek, a woman or a guy or whatever, if you really cared about them. You know, uh, there was a time during the, I guess was it the, uh, yeah, it was in the '60s when guys started kissing each other hello because they yeah and i was very used to that because i always did it with my father and the lips it's, it's, so it was nice to be able to go up to a guy and you know who you really liked as a friend and give him a kiss on the cheek on the cheek yeah it was just it was just it was being warm it was showing warmth yeah. what happened to just saying i don't like that i don't appreciate that what happened is just saying that to the person yeah yeah. What are you just saying? Yes, we do mind if you pull. It, we yes, we do mind if you pull your penis out. Exactly. <laughs> you know. Which in the case of Louis C.K., he asked for permission first, which shows what a gentleman he was. And they stayed. Right. And they yeah. stayed. Yeah. They stayed. Yeah. Watched him pull the penis out. Nobody left the room. He my warned favorite, them. My favorite okay. one with Louis was um, the woman who said she was on the phone with him and she thought he was masturbating. What? Hang up the damn phone. And how did you know he was masturbating? But how did you know? And why would you stay and listen and then complain about it? Yeah. yeah you guys think, you know, what's going on later? What, what were you what's saying, Brian? What's going on here? You think you're masturbating? What's up with that? <laughs> if so, you got something wrong. That, that's not supposed to sound like that. <laughs> and by the way, if I don't have to watch you jerking oh, off because you're on the phone, what do I care? Yeah, exactly. Now we got to feel sorry for the guy. Who was it that got caught jerking off while he was on a Zoom call? Oh, Tubin. <laughs> he was Tubin. Tubin. Yeah. Tubin the tube. Now is he, is he, has he been reinstated? Has he been reinstated? I don't think so. I think he was fired. He was fired because he was jerking off on a YouTube call. Zoom. No one could see it. It was below the camera. He got caught. A Zoom call, wasn't it? Yeah. Okay. And because of it, he's changed his last name, so it doesn't include the word tube anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Ben. <laughs> Mr. Ben. Oh, man. Oh, man. Is that amazing? Look, you know, um, in, my last, in my last few years of teaching, we had, you know, these sensitivity trainings where you tell, you know, you can't compliment someone on their shirt or their haircut because if you do that, they could claim that that's harassment. Wow. So it's not even kissing on the cheek. It's like, you know, nice haircut. Oh, you know, you can't, you're not allowed to do that. Yeah. I mean, I don't, I, I don't understand that. It makes no sense. To it me. doesn't make sense, but you know, you got to do it because you'll get, you'll get in trouble. You know? well, we have I'm, glad, I'm glad I'm not dating anymore. Of course, so is Marjorie, but <laughs> uh, uh, I'm glad I'm not dating anymore. Cause I would, you know, every woman you go out with, you'd have to have them sign a, a disclaimer. You know, I will not sue you for this date. Right. Or, but and, they're so it, happy to let you pay for dinner. Of course. Yeah. Are we still expected to pay for dinner now that we're liable for all the other stuff? I believe yeah. so. Oh, Maybe okay. I'm wrong. I believe we're expected to pay for dinner and then bye. Nice heaven. Yeah. Nice night. I, you know, if I were if I were back doing my radio show in San Francisco now and it was oh, the time it is now. I wouldn't go out with anybody. Yeah. You and know, the, yeah, the, yes, first, Brian. the first move is illegal now, right? The guy makes the first move on the woman. That's illegal. Yeah. Right? You, you have to ask. You have to ask. You have to ask. You have to Put your arm around her, you know, yeah. and then. Well, whatever happened to the art of uh, the art of seduction? But forget about seduction because that usually ends up in sex. So we could just argue whatever happened to just uh, wooing somebody. What's about pitching woo? Okay, let's go back to an old term. You know, he bought me three drinks at dinner. He got me drunk. Uh-huh. Okay. And his intentions were to have sex with me. And that bothered me. And it's bothered me for the rest of my life. You know. Yeah, I just, I just, I, I, 
You know, I, I'm, what bothers me is I think when it comes into conflict with art, you know, I don't <laughs> like what's happened to Woody Allen. That's horrible. Lately. Because, it is. Uh, and and Bill, Maher, Bill Maher brought this up and it's very true. And I don't usually agree with Bill Maher on, uh, on anything because I don't like him, <laughs> but as a personally, uh, but uh, the fact was, he said the other day, he said the, the documentary was called Alan V. Um, Barrow. 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 He said the implication from the title is, is that both sides are being heard because it's like a trial. And well, that both sides, both there sides there were not heard. That this was really Mia Farrow's story. So it should have just been called the case by Mia Farrow against Woody Allen and left it at that. But they didn't. They, Allen v, v. Farrow, but they put his name first, like he's suing her. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't matter, though, to anybody who's watching this because they don't know. They're, they're just believing what they see. You look at the comments on, you know, on Twitter about it, and there are people who are saying, well, you know, he's a disgusting pedophile who married his daughter. I mean, it's just craziness. Yeah. He, they don't... He, 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 to begin with, that is completely wrong. He right, did completely, not, completely. He did not marry true. his daughter. <laughs> of course not. He didn't even, <laughs> he, he didn't even adopt her. No. Okay. Um, uh, so, you know, I mean, and she was 21 when they first started going out, you know, when they first started... <laughs> having a relationship together. Mia was 19 when she married Frank. That's right. I mean, yeah. she was just a poor loser. She yeah, couldn't get over it. 30 uh, years how, later, she still yeah, When she finally had out. a kid by Frank. Yeah. 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 <laughs> talk, about, talk about hell hath no fury like a woman scorned. Jesus. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> I mean, they say, they say that Woody was kind of cold to Ronan. That he, you know, he, he, he put all his emphasis on, on the daughter. And no, I know why he was... He was yeah, they, yeah, they called uh, him young blue eyes. Well, <laughs> every, if that is the product of Woody Allen, there is nothing of Woody in Ronan. No. You no. know? And, uh, and I find that, you know, pretty suspicious all the way around, you know? And, and Mia, even in an interview uh, a few years back, said, well, he might, be the, he might be Frank's son. So she even admitted it. She also had Frank call Woody at like two in the morning and threaten his life, say she, when he was going to rub him out. Really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Uh -huh. He said he was terrified. He got this phone call at <laughs> like two in the morning, Frank Sinatra, warning him. Yeah, well, I, I, didn't he she spent say, 30 years trying to get back at him? She said, You took one, my daughter, I'm taking your son. Well, didn't he didn't he he didn't she say at one time to him that she threatened his life herself? Well, well she, she, said said that she sent him that weird Valentine with yeah, needles, yeah with the baggage going to him. <laughs> He's just said, a psychopath. He said, I couldn't sleep for weeks. He says, I thought I was gonna be killed in my bed. Oh. You know, so I mean, this is really it's it's it, but it, what's sad about it is, here's a guy. I'm. I'm. He says he's still going to be able to make movies for the rest of his life. I'm sure he's got foreign investors who yeah. feel this is just ridiculous. Okay, mm -hmm. but still, you know, I mean, suppose this had happened to him. Well, it did happen to him 30 years ago. You know, um, and and. At that point, the, yeah. the same mentality we have today, he would have never made another film. Think of all the great films yeah. that wouldn't have been yeah. made. Movies that we've enjoyed and liked. And, you know, I mean, I don't know what you feel about him, Rick, but, you know, I think he made enjoyable films. I like this. To fact, a point. In fact, and, my, and he got full of himself, but he still made well-made films. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But, but he lost the TV deal he was supposed to do. And they cut him out. No, no, he had the TV deal. He did it. The Netflix deal. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Amazon deal. Amazon. Yeah. yeah, he did. It was that. a lousy show, but he, he it was filmed and it aired. Yeah. Which one was that? That was the one that my friend Bobby Slate I guess was in. Um, kind of or a dramedy or I yeah, Elaine May and Miley Cyrus. Yeah, yeah, it wasn't bad, you know. 
But uh, it's clear, though, it's, he didn't do those Geico commercials you like. Amazon <laughs> decided that they didn't want to do any more movies with him because of the threat, you know, the, the allegations against him. Well, I mean, this is like, you know, finding somebody guilty without saying, OK, well, now present me with the proof. And there is no proof. And I, Woody Allen, to his credit, there was an interview on CBS this morning. They did, uh, they did a separate little CBS This Morning Plus. And it was an interview with Woody Allen that they did last July. And to his credit, he said, I'm sure she believes this. Right. You know, I have every feeling that she is not, doesn't feel she's lying. Dylan, not Mia. Dylan, but she, but she is, you know, that she's, she is simply, uh, he, what, he, what he insinuated was putting out with the truth that had been implanted in her as a young child. And this happens all the time. You know, yes. You remember the McMartin preschool, all those kids who visually remembered being molested by the teachers when none of them were. Yep. You know. Now, the bottom line for me, Alex, is, I mean, Woody Allen took a lie detector test and passed it. And if he seems like a pr pretty nervous guy that probably couldn't fake his way through a lie detector test. Yeah. Why won't Mia and Dylan take one? That would make, if, if Mia and Dylan took a lie detector test and if they passed it, then I'd worry about it. I think it. Dylan but, would probably, I agree with him. I think Dylan would pass it. And why doesn't she do it? Yeah, but I don't think the um, Ronin would. Right, no. I don't either. Yeah. Or why Mia. Would they, or why Mia. wouldn't they do it? If I was them and I, I was telling the truth, I'd say yeah, he is crazy. She probably would pass it because she's crazy. Yeah, but and 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 she shouldn't hate him because she would have never had a career past uh, the few she years did. that she had one if it weren't for him. Right. After yeah. husbands and wives, what has she done? She did thirteen films with him. Yeah. Yeah. And nothing yeah. after. And, nothing. and after this thing happened back 28, 29 years ago. Yeah. She called Woody up and said, when am I going in for my fitting for the next picture? She went in. Yeah, yeah. Like and, and, he, and he said, are you kidding me? No, she showed up on set, Alex, to be fitted. Oh, okay. For Manhattan Murder Mystery. And everyone was like, didn't know what to do. Yeah, well, who wound up doing that film? Diane Keaton. Diane Keaton. Diane Keaton. Yeah, and she felt like, oh, everything's fine so far as us making movies, isn't it? Even though I'm accusing you of being a... Uh, <laughs> You know, a child. Yeah, you're a rapist, but uh, I'm very fitting, Mr. Bill. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, and she had a career through 13 years. He made a film every year. Yep. And for 13 years, she was the lead in the picture. And I always thought she was kind of crappy. Uh, you know, I really would have liked to have seen Diane Keaton. Yeah, way better. Way better. You know, bring back your ex-wife, Louise Lasser. He also brought up one other thing. He said, everybody makes a big deal about Sun Yi. He said, nobody found it more amazing than me because all the women I had ever dated up to that point were approximately my age. Louise Lasser, I married. Diane Keaton was my his girlfriend wife. in a long time. Before um, Louise Lasser, he had a wife. Who was and, he, and he mentioned, he said, my first wife was of age. I, he said, if you ever told me that I would wind up at some point in my life with an uh, a young Asian that was like 30 years or 40 years younger than me, I would have told you you were nuts. I couldn't conceive of it. And all of a sudden, I'm being accused of child 57, molestation. 57, all of a sudden, of child molestation. Yeah. He said, don't you think I would have done it before this? You know? And, and that all makes sense. It does. You know? And yes, I see the tears coming out of Dylan's eyes and so on. But this is repressed memory. You know, this is reconstructed memory that, and people do this all the time in the case of divorces and so on, and poisoning the children's minds against their parents. So, you know, uh, that was uh, that was it's kind of sad. All of a sudden, I noticed the number of people watching went down when we started discussing this. <laughs> so what, what, should, what should we discuss that would uh, get? Well, let's go back to flow and progressive. You know, <laughs> uh, uh, Mike. Yeah, I got a question. I, I was listening to uh, to Dave on uh, Al Franken's podcast yesterday, and they were talking about comedy teams, and they were they brought up a comedy team called Bob and Ray. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm very I'm I'm just just barely aware of Bob and Ray. Did well, you very, ever uh, have any encounters with them, Alex? When you I've never had any comedy encounters team? with them. I you know, in fact, Shecky has probably come closer to that than I have because 
Uh, Bob, well, they Bob didn't Elliott's know, son course. is Chris Elliott. Yeah. Did you, did Bob ever come by? <clears throat> oh yeah. Bob Bob and Ray did the show. Oh, they did. The show. Yeah, they yeah. did do your show. Yeah. Yeah, in the early eighties. Great. Are there any comments? And Ray got ill. And, That's my you know, question. Steve's about to ask my question too. I was going to say, are there any comedy what teams com yeah, what these to days anymore? Teams? And it seems like it's such a lost art. Yeah. Uh, like Franken was part of a comedy team too, and right? Franken Franken Davis. Davis. Franken and yeah. Davis. And it's like, um, I David, who OD? Did Davis OD? Oh yeah, heroin. Oh wow, I didn't know that. Oh wow. Well, mm -hmm. that's what you get for hanging out with Al Franken. <laughs> <laughs> there's there's comedy Gary teams in movies, but I'm not aware of stage comedy teams anymore uh uh comedy teams they were big know. right burns and shrivers oh, miller oh, and mira i'll mention one ant and deck tom and jerry did everybody go into a, well who's that who's oh no oh, i know the british the british team the british, the, the british team. team yeah yeah oh. well, well, a couple of teams, i guess the mother's uh, brothers are great well ones. you had brian laurie uh, which was uh, Stephen Fry and you, Lori. And you've got what's her name, um, Jennifer Saunders and Dawn French. Right, but yeah. it's more of a it's more of a British thing, right? Because it's yeah, more it is a British it's thing, more theatrical. Yeah. It's more troop, like you know, they have more comedy. You know, the you have doing. here maybe Steve Martin and um, Martin, 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 Martin Short. Short. Yeah, they're not really a team. They do things together. Yeah, do things together. I know. See, that was the same thing. I was thinking Amy Poehler and Tina Fey, but it's. Alex, what's the one that we watched? It was two guys and they were in a they're in a boat. They're in a boat and he he killed the dog and roasted it. Oh, oh, oh that's uh that peep show. Peep show. Yeah, those guys were, were they a team? They weren't awesome. really a team. They were, they together, were not, but they just were no, but they had a radio show. They worked together. Yeah. 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 Oh, that that was so fun. What were they? Uh, uh, what were they called? I'm yeah. going up on your names right now. I know. We're getting to that age checking. It happens there's, all the time. There's a Canadian show with a group of four. That's, it was at Letterkenny. Four oh, Letterkenny, yeah. Working together. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Bubs and Feldman were my favorite. Feld and McLeod. Those sort of guys were good. I did. Yeah. <laughs> they were on your show, Bubs and Feldman. Those guys would be laughing so hard. On their own jokes, it would just be hysterical. By the do way, I don't know what's happened with your with your sound, but you sound really well. Oh. Huh? Tinny. Yeah. It's tinny. When you went to a new computer, it's gotten tinny. Is that any better? No. Yeah. <laughs> Is that any better? No. Is the audio, you better check later, check, and see if the <laughs> audio is coming from your webcam or, or uh, the screen or wherever your main microphone is. <laughs> Because it might be coming off of something else in he's, the system. I think he's jealous of Ed Berger. He's trying to compete. <laughs> Speaking of comedy teams, did you guys ever hear Derek and Clive? You know, Derek and Peter Clive. Cook and Dudley Moore doing the filthiest yeah, yeah. comedy. Uh, Dudley Moore, yeah. The yeah. filthiest comedy ever done by yeah. human beings. Well, they, See, that's these, 60s. You know. know. But these are guys who, who literally, I think, formed teams while working separately and they just kind of came together. Or they were at Cambridge together in school, like Monty Python. You know, they were just yeah. trying to get people. It all came out of Beyond the Fringe and Oxford and Cambridge and all that stuff, yeah. Yeah, but we don't, you're right. We don't, do, can you think of any teams that have formed in the last couple of years? I can't, you know. I, you I know, can't. there are probably some that are in these movies that I don't watch. No, but but they're not. Right, but if you go to a comedy club, you're not going to see a team. Right. Oh, no, no, oh. no. No, and, and you're not going to see if you watch these comedy shows where they do a people get up and do their comedy. You're not going to see a team. That's well. That's, now you don't want to split split the money. Well, you know uh, there have been some very successful teams over right. the years, and, and it's know? probably a little bit easier in some sense to write off of somebody and you know do stuff together than just stand and do a monologue for forty minutes. And that's well, wrong. I would say I would say it's not, it's not that it's easier, but it's. it's well, I guess easy is a bad word to well, use. Oh, yeah, it's a different. Yeah, it's a but, different. but it is a, a, a different process in which you're working with somebody else. So really what it becomes is improv. Right. You know. What about Penn and Teller? Penn and Teller, are good. they're a team. That's a good example. Yep, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, but they're magician. I don't want to call right. them magicians. They're not a stand-up. Yeah. Stand, you know, not standing there. 
doing, they're you know, not they're doing supposed, that. Yeah, nobody goes to Penn and Teller to say, oh, let's go see Penn and Teller. They're hilarious. They go to Penn and Teller and say they're great magicians. I mean, they're funny. I think it's both. Oh, they're funny. They're funny. They yeah, they play off each other the way that like Abbott and Costello did and whatnot. They 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 definitely have that element, but you're right. They're not nobody's going to see them to to laugh. Yeah. And yet when we think of a great comedy, what do we think of? We think of teens. We think of Abbott and Costello and old Laurel and Hardy. Wheeler and Woolsey. Wheeler and Woolsey. <laughs> well, the and McCullough. <laughs> uh, Clark and McCullough. Clark and McCullough. Yeah. You know what happened to McCullough, don't you? People don't know. Uh, you know what happened to McCullough. What happened to McCullough? He was in a sanitarium. Yeah. And he was let out, was going home and said, can I stop at this barber shop to get a shave and cut his throat? Uh, oh, great. That was McCullough? <laughs> what? Yeah. It's a close shave. And Clark, it was a Bobby Clark was the other guy's name. No, was it? Yeah, and, and then Clark had a very long career. Yeah, and he went on and had his own career. You guys don't even know who Broadway, the television. I, and I wouldn't was either game. because these people were doing what they did be almost before I was born. So. Alex Burns and Allen, Burns and Allen, Burns and Allen. Oh yeah, the old time Grace. You know. Yeah, but then George worked for thirty-five years after Gracie quit the act. Yeah. Yeah. And long after she was in the soil, you know. Um, I still can't get over this real life Sweeney Todd situation you just told me about. That's crazy. Yeah. What do you mean? Yeah, no, he oh, cut yeah. his throat. Yeah. Uh, I'll tell you what what uh, I was watching a documentary on on Jack Benny and and the stories always go that Benny Burns could do almost anything. And Benny would fall on the floor laughing. <laughs> You couldn't stop. He could, and he. It, there were some function. I can't remember what it was. <clears> somebody, uh, uh, somebody royal, I think, from some royal family somewhere. And he said, "Whatever you do, when we're introduced to her, do not laugh." And as soon as he was introduced, that was it. on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> and, didn't um, didn't Benny like this? You know, didn't Benny get George Burns the Sunshine Boys because it was supposed to be Jack Benny and he was sick, right? And he said, he well, was, no, he didn't get it for him. It's when Benny. He was dying. He had Benny died cancer, right? suddenly. And the producers were like, now what do we do? And somebody was like, well, how about George Burns? Oh, really? Is that what happened? Oh, okay. I thought Benny suggested him. He said he wanted him. No, no, because Benny was diagnosed with um, the pancreatic cancer like two weeks before he died. Wow. Well, yeah. Good job. Yeah. yeah. It was Those were the days when pancreatic yeah. cancer was like, Okay, you know, pick out the plot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, white was a flowers. Good loving documentary on him that was done it really was. By, by CBS, I think, uh, with the Smothers, uh, with Tom Smothers as the narrator. Yeah, it, it's 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 on YouTube. Yeah. yeah, you can find it on YouTube. Everything you ever hey, you can find all the Clark and McCullough films on YouTube. Yes, you can find probably find Clark and McCullough. Go back. They were oh, no, playing. you can. Trust me. I, I, they're all there. <laughs> you know, uh, let me ask you this, Jackie. As a guy all your life, you've collected old films, right? <laughs> How do you feel about the fact that you can find almost any of them on YouTube now? Well, that's why I haven't bought a film in 20 years. Yes. Yeah. What's, yeah. what's the point? What's the point? And you can yeah. download them off of uh, YouTube as well. Yeah. Uh, so I mean, it it it, it it's pretty amazing. But uh, what that's you my whole youth, man. I had a thousand CDs. You know, I was a big music guy, and that was a big deal for me getting that collection of CDs. Now, every single one of them are just collecting dust, and every single track that's on them, other than some rarities here. You can find for free anywhere. Uh, Shecky and I probably have somewhat of a regret having bought laser discs. <laughs> <laughs> I had them too. Remember, Alex? Yeah, but you can have a back of video. Shecky, how many do you have? Oh, at least a thousand. I had, I had maybe a couple. Uh, maybe I had 150, 200. Maybe. I had about 100. You had about 100. Yeah, yeah I gave them away. Yeah. No, I remember. They, I no, that. they were great at the time. Yes, Jeff. Well, there are still things yeah, so my, that have not been wait. on DVD that were on Laser, so it's catch twenty two. Yeah. Jeff, my my son got some CDs recently. Somebody gave him one or two. 
Next thing he knows, he tells everybody, oh yeah, I got a machine now and I can uh, uh, play her and I can listen to it. Everybody in the whole family already says, I got all these old crappy things. How would you like them? And they <laughs> drop them off from his house. <laughs> and he's got thousands of them coming in every day. Yeah. That's so, are making a comeback. Well, I bought all these yep. DVDs. Yeah, you can stop by here. Me. And I've already taken about a couple, several, about 800 of them and put them away because I put them all on a hard drive. You yeah. didn't do mine. No, no. And of course, you're the one who bought Disco Vision. No, that, it wasn't doing no, Disco Vision. What was the RCA? Uh, you we're going to go over a little Select bit the Vision. Disco Vision was Select the Vision. original. Yeah. yeah. Disco Vision was the original name for laser discs. And I said, you know, that was a bad name for them, but they named them Disco Vision because they felt laser. People might be afraid of anything with the word laser. Right. It was Selective Vision. That's the one you had to put it in the machine. It was a disc. And then it would pull the disc out because it was in a sleeve of some yeah, sort. And it played it with a needle. <laughs> there was a needle yeah. inside it. You know, it's RCA decided we got to come up with something that's like a record that plays. And then 30 minutes later, you had to pull it out and turn it over. Yeah. And then, you turn it over, and then, some, then after a while, over. it started to wear down and the video didn't look. Oh, it was horrible. It was the worst thing. I bought one. Yeah, I bought one. That shows yeah. you how much fuck you money I had in those days. Yeah, you had, you had it in um, Marin. <laughs> In yeah. the apartment. Yeah, I gave it to my ex-wife. That's how much I loved it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I want to thank everybody for joining me today. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 Edward Berger. That's right. <laughs> Got to, with that voice. Okay. Shecky, thank you. Thank you to uh, uh, Steve Bender. There he is. There's uh, Edward Berger. There's uh, Andrew Deutsch. There's Mike Chisholm. There's Charlie Wallace. There is, uh, what's your name again? Uh, Marjorie Myler? My oh, oh, I know. Marjorie Schwartzman. Uh, uh, <laughs> Jeff Stein, and thank you to Brian Neary. <laughs> thank you to everybody, okay? Thank you. And uh, we'll see you again next week. Bye-bye.